again, everyone, and welcome to another Family Ties production of Western Big Six Basketball. Tonight, we're bringing a broadcast to you from Wharton Field House for probably the biggest game in the last 30 years. Along with my sidekick, Jim Sanders, this is Jim Smith and cameraman John Medina, raring to bring you the action of this great ball game. We've got two ranked teams coming in here, Coach Sanders. Um, tell us a little bit about the rankings and what we can expect. Well, it's a super ball game, Coach. I think it's just a matter of of, uh, of two fantastic teams. Galesburg comes into this ball game ranked number three in the state of Illinois. Moline ranked fourth. There's only one loss between the two teams, and that was a Galesburg loss in a shootout down in St. Louis on a Thursday night, which is always a tough one. And a team to beat them is ranked, I think, first or second in the state of Missouri. First in Missouri, and they're right. they're both 3-0 uh, and oh in the Western Big Six. So for this point of the season, early January here, we've got a shootout like none other that I can remember. Well, we're hawking back to the days of the mid and late 60s probably 30 plus years since we've had a game of this magnitude there's been a lot of uh, a lot of in the local papers about games that occurred back in the 1964 65 season in similar situation where galesburg and moline were ranked uh, highly regarded in the state second and third third and fourth uh, both come in undefeated or with one loss each and uh, so, it, so it's generated a lot of excitement in this area and i'm sure it has in the galesburg area as well because anytime you get two teams like this together, there's going to be excitement. But uh, the, th the thing that kind of maybe will warm the cockles of the old fans' hearts is that uh, we are talking about what, what basketball used to be like in the old days. And the old-timers like to talk about back in the days of the, of the uh, Western Big Six uh, early days and the Mississippi Valley Conference and the Metro Conference here in the Quad Cities and the great Galesburg teams of John Thiel in the 50s and 60s. So... It, it, we have that same kind of atmosphere here. We look around the Wharton Field House here, venerable old Wharton Field House, brand new floor, but we've got a 1960s crowd here. There's not an empty seat in the place. It's packed rafter to rafter. Yeah, they're guesstimating about 6,000 people in here, standing room only, and you're right. I, I, my first experience with Western Big Six basketball happened in 1978, watching UT and the, and the great Quincy teams battle each other that particular year. You couldn't get a seat at UT or any place else in the country conference for that matter, but I think this proves one thing, even with all the other distractions uh, of professional sports in the Quad Cities, we could argue that one Friday night being a high school night or not, but nevertheless, if you put a product out like these two basketball teams, you're going to be able to sell 6,000 seats in a, in a basketball arena as they did this year in football with uh, Rock Island and Moline right. in football. Right. You can pack a stadium that way. So. This is, I hope, is the beginning of, of lots of big crowds. I was talking to the announcers from Galesburg, and we're glad to be uh, a part of the Galesburg uh, community right now. This is going to be our first exposure into Galesburg with TCI, Family Ties Productions. Uh, and I guess almost every game of Galesburg this year is a sellout already. So the fans do support their teams, and uh, what a great sight and what a great spectacle, and we're just happy to be part of it. You know, and the other thing, you talk about the the fan support, Moline has great fans and Galesburg has great fans and they have had for many, 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 many years, decades. But I think the thing that ma that uh, makes a difference in this ball game, you've got basketball fans here tonight from all walks of life, all ages, um, you know, fans from uh, East Moline and Rock you Island bet. and Almond fans and I'm sure there's a few people from Iowa that came over to see this game nope. just because it's such a big game. No question about that, and, then, and I think we're going to see some fantastic players. Let's let's talk about it. I think first of all, I think we got to get away from talking about a matchup of two great players from uh, Galesburg and two great players from Moline. I think uh, we've th there've been a lot of things written about that, but these are two teams, basketball teams. Both teams have five excellent starters. They go two players, three players at least deep into the bench. I think Galesburg may go a little farther into the bench, maybe than Moline. Uh, but this is a team effort, and all these young men, the coaches, and the fans from both schools are going to contribute to the uh, success of this ball game, and, and it's going to be a success irregardless of which team comes out on top. Right, you talk about the two big stars on uh, uh, each of the two teams. Moline, of course, they have their two div Division I signees, Travis Wilson, uh, signed and ready to go to Arizona, and Ian Hanovan, their man in the middle, is going to go to University of Illinois at Chicago are the, are the two big men, the men that get the most attention, but uh, some people that you can't overlook. Marcus Morrow is a two-year two, two year starter and played as a sophomore. Kenny Spranger, two-year starter, played some as a sophomore. Uh, Ryan Dexter stepped in to, to round out that Moline lineup, so 
you've got you've got five players on the Moline side, and if the and if the two big guns on each side neutralize each other, maybe one of the other players will step up and fill uh, fill their fill up a, uh, some big shoes. Well, you know, I think you mentioned it, and we talked a little earlier about the Quincy game that you you did earlier in the year. And Ryan Dexter is the man who, at, at, at crunch time, stepped up, and made three, I think, three or four three-point shots, right, and and took the ball game uh, for Moline. So, but you're right, Joey Range and Rod Thompson from Galesburg, premier players. They're both going to the University of Iowa. Coach Davis doesn't make many mistakes over there, so these are obviously kids who can, that he feels can play, and along with a lot of other people, feel can play in the Big Ten. But you're right, Patrick Hanlon uh, is a, a uh, 6'3 senior. Uh, Steve Glass. Go, a senior. He's averaging about nine points a ball game. And Taylor Thiel averaging about nine points a ball game with Bo Shea coming off the bench and other players that are going to see a lot of action for Galesburg. And I agree with you. I think this is going to be the kind of ball game where everybody's going to going to have a, 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 a part to play in this great spect spectacle that we're going to call a, a, the Western Big Six shootout, the first of the year. And of course, we can't sell this way higher than, than, than it is because gee, right. both these teams have got to go play at Quincy yet, and they've been, and there's a rematch February 20th down at Galesburg. But I'll tell you what, uh, there hasn't been a bigger game as you mentioned probably in that 30-year period, and there will probably be bigger ones yet. Yeah, and you, and and not, and not to make it a game of, of such great magnitude that we're overlooking other things because this is we're still in the first rotation through the conference schedule. Right. And as you mentioned. Uh, both these teams have to go down to Quincy and play, which is a tough place to play. Uh, I've seen Quincy play Moline here at Wharton Field House, and that was a very uh, close contest. We both saw uh, Galesburg play uh, UT over at uh, East Moline a couple weeks ago, and uh, and we both saw Moline and UT play. So we've seen both these teams play a little bit, and uh, it's gonna be an interesting matchup, because I think both teams will push the ball if you give them a chance. Both teams can run pattern offense, get their shooters open. If you take away the big men on the inside, the outside shooting will take care of itself. Yep. I think maybe uh, one of the intangibles in the ball game is something we alluded to a little earlier about some of the the other players, if you will, quote unquote, stepping up and filling their role. Uh, someone like Marcus Morrow could step up and have a huge game. He's, he's capable of scoring. That's right. Uh, there was a nice article in the paper on him this week about uh, he's kind of realized earlier in the season he was trying to do too much, actually maybe hurting the team a little bit by overextending himself, making some uh, plays that he didn't need to make. Right. He's realized that uh, Coach Dexter sat down and they talked about it. And since they've had that talk, he's realized I don't need to score. I don't need to score all the time. I don't need to force the ball all the time. If I play defense and handle the ball like I'm capable of, that makes the team go better. And there's no question about that. And the other thing is, too, he adds so much, too, uh, talking about Marcus Morrow, to your, to your package because he's a big guard. And, and, and I know, especially last year, uh, uh, a couple ball games that we saw him play where he had a smaller guard on him, and, and he went down and posted him down low post and became a post player and tore people up last year from that position. So they can do lots of things uh, along the way. Uh, Galesburg uh, along the way, too. Galesburg, of course, I think they're going to have to try to keep Hanneman off the boards. And, of course, Joey Range, or, uh, 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 all, all the big kids, Spranger, I, I like Spranger. I think he does lots of good things for Moline also and Travis Wilson. But I think how Galesburg can go to the boards, if they can match up rebound for rebound with, with Moline, I think they've got a shot. Right. I was going to mention one thing. I heard uh, Coach Dexter on the radio this morning, and he was talking about uh, one of the big improvements Moline's made has been their free throw shooting and how they'd been making, you know, 60%, 58% of their free throws. And I forget the exact statistic. I wish I had it here, but it was, it was like... 38 out of the last 40 free, uh, 43 free throws have gone in, and that we know when a game like this comes right down the wire, the team that makes free throws is going to win the ball game. You know, and that's you can to make an analogy, and somehow we always manage to work it around to football, but free throw shooting is kind of the same thing as uh, special teams. All coaches pay lip service to to special teams, and that's a big part of the game. Well. I mean, you could say the same thing in basketball about free throw shooting because if you go back and look at the team that that makes the free throws down the stretch that's the team that's probably going to pull out the win right, that's you know uh, we saw Galesburg play over UT and and UT did a great job of taking the controlling range and uh, Thompson didn't have a big game over there he was tough on the boards but didn't score much but UT sagged in on the big guys and and packed it in on the inside and what uh, what hurt UT was the shooting of uh, 
uh, Theo and Hanlon from right. the outside. Right. They're, they're excellent three-point shooters, and they're not afraid to shoot. No. You spot them up, they get their shoulders squared up. They're going to knock down the three. So we've seen Moline over the years. Uh, last year especially, they came out and, and really got hot when they started playing their 2-3 yeah. zone. They're playing a little more man-to-man -man this year, so we'll see that in and out. We'll keep an eye on their man-to-man -man and zone and back and forth and maybe try to keep Galesburg off uh, off, off uh, base a little bit with their, with their changes in defense. Well, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk briefly about Mike Miller and the job that he's done down at Galesburg since he's taken that program over. Done a nice job. Galesburg's had great tradition in basketball, and uh, Barry Swanson did a night, I think, a great job down there, and and had some in the last couple, two or three years. I remember going down refereeing a couple of ball games in, in my last year or two that Don DeLue and I refereed, where we had Galesburg and Rock Island in some fantastic ball games down there. And uh, you know, this is not a a, uh, a surprise necessarily to anybody that Galesburg got a good basketball team. Uh, they they do a nice job, but Mike's done a, a, a great job. I've had a chance to visit with him a couple times the rule interpretation meetings a fine young man has done a beautiful job since coming to Galesburg from Rockford well what do you think well I think as the teams uh, complete their warm-ups here why don't we take a quick break and we'll be uh, right back with the starting lineups three At this time, the well welcome back to uh, Pat Wharton Field House. This is Jim Smith along with Jim Sanders. Excited to bring you the action of this big game tonight. Both teams are just finishing up their warm-ups. Going to the bench. We're going to have the Moline fight song, the Galesburg fight song, and then we'll have the, the starting lineups. I'll tell you, Coach, what, this is the worst minute or so for anybody. I don't care whether the fans, the players, the coaches, the officials. You want to get this next minute or so out of the way, maybe even for announcers, who knows, but you want to get this last minute or so out of the way so you can go and uh, play basketball. You've been waiting for this for a long get those, time. Get, you, the butterflies are terrible and right up until the time you start playing, and then once the tip-off goes, yeah. then things kind of calm down yeah. and you get into the flow. You bet I'd like for both teams to maybe be a little tight coming out of the blocks. Uh, both teams probably want to establish themselves, so we'll see how that unfolds you in bet. the first couple minutes of the you quarter here. Well, I'll tell you, I'm ready. I don't know about you. The clock's running down to zero. What we're going to do tonight for you is we're going to turn the announcing uh, to the starting lineups and national anthem over to John Knob, the public address announcer at Horton Fieldhouse. John Knob. Fourth varsity basketball game featuring the Associated Press number three rated team in the state.
gentlemen, there's your starting lineups. To run down those lineups again, we've got Steve Glasgow, Taylor Thiel, Patrick Hanlon, Rod Thompson, Joey Range for the Silver Streaks, Ryan Dexter, Marcus Morrow, Kenny Springer, Travis Wilson, Ian Hanneman for the Maroons, coaching the Galesburg Silver Streaks, Mike Miller, and for the Moly Maroons, Frank Dexter. Well, there's a couple interesting situations as you start the ball game. Of course, everybody's keyed up to work the ball game, and the officials are, are, are equally ready to go. You're in a ball game like this, now this is the kind of game you work for. You work your whole season to get a game of this caliber. Not that the others aren't equally important, but you need, if you're going to be a, a, an outstanding official, you need to have a certain number of these ball games in your season. And this is the one for the officials in the ball game tonight. So let's play basketball. Moline undefeated against Galesburg with one loss, both undefeated in the conference. Moline with a tip. And it went Morrow in the corner. Galesburg, tough man-to-man. -to -man. Hanneman on the baseline, loses the ball, turns it over to the Silver Streaks. Silver Streaks will take the ball out of bounds. 34, Joey Range will inbounds the ball against full court. Zone press by Moline and a turnover. One Next turnover with each steal. Fast pace action. Springer, three. Count it. Kenny Springer, big three. Moline early lead. Well, right now, uh, Moline's really putting pressure on in this press, going full court, nearly another steal. Thompson with the ball, stop, pop, it's good, count it. Rod Thompson, 6'6", six, six, senior, headed for Iowa. Ryan Dexter walks it up the floor. Good man-to-man -man pressure by Galesburg at this point. Good hustle. Ball's gonna go to the Silver Streaks. Good pressure defense. They're not pressuring all over the court, but uh, you know, and this is typical. We talked, you talked in the pregame about being a little jittery to start. Both teams look a little tight right you now. Better believe it. And both teams defensively aren't helping that situation with by playing great you're defense. Right. When you're nervous and uptight, you always play good defense. It's just the offense that suffered. Galesburg with the ball right now. Handling out front, gets that ball to Thiel. Moline's playing man-to-man. Last go. To, oh, nice spin bow pass. Look out. Slam dunk by Joey Range. So far, Gillsburg's got that ball inside. They're two big kids. The two possessions, they've got the ball down the floor. Yeah, Range had excellent position on the blocks and got Hanovan screened off. Hanovan across the lane, stops, fires, won't go. Springer with the rebound, put oh, back block. block. And Thompson controls to Rage. Beautiful feed, basket for Taylor Thiel. And Galesburg leads 6-3 here, 6.15 to go in the first quarter. Dexter. Wilson on the wing. They are working Morrow down low post, trying to get him isolated against Steve Glasgow. Running some back screens and he's yep. running the baseline. Yep. And so that was, if we talked about that in the pregame a little bit, Glasgow at 6 1. They're trying to isolate him down there, maybe get some shots. Looks like Rays comes out with it and he's going to be fouled. Springer's going to pick up the first foul of the ball game. Fans wanted a foul on range on there. It was a kind of yep. little entry pass to. The hand of an area because look, their hands kind of got tied up, but yes, the refs, refs didn't call it. No. Fans were upset. Well, that's going to happen. Glasgow <laughs> controls outside for Galesburg, gets the ball to Joey Range. <laughs> Theo off the front of the rim, Thompson controls. Galesburg going to take a shot from the free throw line. Thompson had nobody to pass to, so he said, Well, I guess I better shoot yeah. it. I'm as open as I anybody else. I'll fire it. <laughs> 520 Wilson, to go. down the lane, won't go. Hand with a rebound, put back. There's a free chin foul. Hanover will go to the line. I think that foul is going to go on number 24. That's Patrick, Patrick Hanlon. Hanlon yeah. Hanlon's going to pick up that foul. Well, it looks like it's pretty obvious where Moline wants to get the ball. Other than Springer's three-point uh, 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 basket, they want that ball down low. Yeah, they've, uh, there's the other shots that have come from the paint or from the layup range. And with the line, makes his first. 8-4. Streaks with the early lead. Hanovan hits them both. 
Inbounds pass, good ball controlled by Glasgow, gets the ball back to Roy Ross, oh, steal by Springer. That's goaltending, you gotta count that one, nice call. Kenny Springer gets a goaltending call. Actually, Range gets the goaltending call. Yep. Gives Kenny Springer the basket. And that's a tough call for the official because against that press, the, the lead official is, is down the court at least a half court, so you don't expect that play to be made. Galesburg across the timeline. Stop, pop inside. Looking for a travel inside. That shot that time by Hanlon. Springer. Didn't go. Down the basket. Kenny Springer. Nice move across the lane. Basket counts. Foul's gonna go on number 22, Taylor Thiel. Talk about Two team fouls now for Galesburg. Game of runs, we knew you knew that was gonna happen along the way. Moline hits the first three. Galesburg scores eight. And Moline comes right back now with six, looking on seven. Count it. Kenny Springer. Well, Galesburg's trying to get that ball down the court in a hurry, and right now they're not protecting the ball real well, but Range gets the ball inside and has a stall. Jump ball coming. Gonna oh, have a foul. Oh, gonna call a foul on Taylor Thiel. If he's not, if he's not careful, he's gonna pick up a technical, and that'll be his third. Well, and that's kind of a point of emphasis this year. You know, the, the question there, did he kind of pile on, you know? Number 20 is coming in the ball game. That's Bo Shea for Galesburg coming off the bench early. Shea is a 5'10 yeah, right. sophomore. In years past, the referees have let that one go. A loose right. ball, it's almost uh, anything goes, but the point of emphasis is piling right. on or yep. jumping on, intentionally sure. jumping on a player. Right. They're going to call that foul. Pass down low. A little too hard. Off hand of it's going to go back to the streaks. 10 to 8, Moline leads. Four minutes, 32 seconds to go. And Galesburg's got to find a way to break the press, Moline's press. I'll tell you, the press is affecting Galesburg big time right now. They're a little out of control, and they're going to have to slow things down because they got the players that are going to score if they ever get into a half-court game. You know, and this is a noisy, noisy gym, and that, that noise like that will just hype you up anyway. And uh, both teams are playing with just a little extra energy right now. Man-to-man -man defense still by Galesburg. They've got, oh, nice entry pass. Hanneman down low, puts it up, through. Four points for Hanneman. Now they broke the press nicely that time. Foul, oh, great drive across the lane. 24, Patrick Hanlon. That's a big move there, left-handed layup coming Very in traffic. Nice. Dexter working the ball people to keep their hands Shea. off, and that is another point of emphasis. We'll see how that gets called tonight. Moline sets up, leading 12-10, 3.47 to go. Springer from the free throw line. Around the rim, wouldn't go. Thompson on the run. Oh, out of control. Long pass from Thompson to handle that time, gets out of bounds. You can Again. see at real early in first quarter action what the plan is. Galesburg wants to break the press and force the play and make layups at the other end right now, as a lot of teams would do, maybe against an Iowa or someone where if you break the press against Iowa, he carried the ball, no question about that. Uh, but you got to make layups at the other end. You breaking the press and then throwing the ball away didn't yeah, do yeah. any good. That long pass over the top was a little too, too, little too long that last time. Well, Morrow turned the ball over and go back to the streaks. Bo Shea is going to take that ball out of bounds and get the ball into Joey Range. And Moline's going to drop back just a little this time. Run a little man-to-man -man offense. Let's see what, the, what the, the Silver Streaks have going here. Nice entry pass into Thompson. Ball a quick hands by Moline. Ryan Dexter reaching in there, flicked that ball out. Clean he just kind of held his hand out there, and uh, Thompson brought the ball up to Dexter's hand. Excellent, excellent job. Good man-to-man -man defense, however, played by Galesburg also. Morrow, jump stop, fires it up. Won't go, there's gonna be a foul call. Could be on Joey Range. He was the man closest to the play. Nope, it's gonna be on number 12, Glasgow. Number 12, Four team fouls now for yep. the streaks. They're gonna go out of bounds. Well, they're gonna shoot free throws on this one. 
He motioned out of bounds, but now the question in, I thought Morrow was definitely in the act of shooting when he blew the whistle, so you got it. Just because he doesn't eventually shoot it, he was trying to shoot the ball. Yeah, he, the was, he was definitely gonna go up for a shot right. there. Thirteen ten. 256 remaining here in the first quarter. Maroons by three. You mentioned that point. Four team fouls to one is our foul total right now. Hillsburg tries to get the ball inbounds. A good quick hands. Get that ball. Boche on the drive. Good quickness by Moley. Moley is quicker. They, they are a lot quicker this year than they were a year ago. Dropping back real good on that. It looked like Galesburg had some yep. had some possibilities. Moley dropped back very quickly. There's going to be a, a foul inside. Hannum is going to pick that one up. Nice post-up move that time by Joey Range. He, he was deep near the block, and he was going to get a good shot off that. You say both the, they're in the early going here. The, uh, the Thompson and Range, both from Galesburg, doing a nice job. Yes, establishing their position down in the low you post. Bet. Joey Range, nice drive in the lane, stops, won't go. Oh, <laughs> Thompson high above the rim. Ball won't go back down for it. Wilson with all the way coast to coast. Ball goes off the rim, wouldn't go. Boche stops and pops, won't go. Great defense by Moline again. That's a great play. That's a smart play by Kenny Springer. Play. He could have thrown it right back in under Galesburg's basket and given up an easy hoop. A couple quick things of that, that when, when uh, Travis had the ball, Travis Wilson had the ball last time, he's not touching the ball very often. There's a good play by Galesburg. Uh, backdoor cut by Steve Glasgow. But they're doing a nice job, and right now Thompson is, is guarding. Um, Travis Wilson. So we'll see how this develops as, as the evening goes along here. And he's got her now. He walked, got away with a walk. Travis Wilson missed the three or four shots now yep. from in close. Yep. But he's not getting uncontested shots, I'll tell you that. Nice drive inside. Number 24, Patrick Hanlon. And we, we got, got some something talk. going on out in the middle of the court here. A little talk going on here right now between Joey Range. And Ryan Dexter, and the officials come in, settle the thing down right away, and the sub coming for Galesburg, Mike Tapper. Well, this is too big of a game, too important of a game, you too bet. good of a game to spoil it with, exactly. the, with and the good extra quicker. And good officiating. Get it stopped right now. You're right. Uh, Patrick Hanlon sits down. Tapper comes in. He's a 6'4 senior. Steal by Galesburg on the drive. Nice layup by Steve Glasgow. And our score now is Galesburg 16, Moline 14. Wilson, <laughs> the Hanover blocked out of bounds. It'll be Moline's ball. 103 remain. Quick, this is fast quick, pace. Up quick and down the hands. floor. Excellent defense by both teams. There are, there are almost no uncontested shots here right now. Kenny Spranger from the corner. Won't go. Wilson rebound. Back to the hoop, goes up, won't go. Tapper on the rebound and a jump ball. Beautiful play, great play. Going to be Galesburg's possession here. Tapper and Springer. Springer did a beautiful job after the, the rebound. Please don't throw anything onto the floor. Gail, Galesburg tapper to inbounds. Gets that ball inbounds to Shea. Across to Glasgow. You're going to have to call that one pretty soon. Well, they called him it, twice. Right. Marcus Marr trying to do reach in yeah. from the backside. He just yeah. he probably fouled him the first time, but he right. definitely got him the right. second time. And that's three the three uh, part. team fouls now. First on Morrow, three team fouls for the Maroons. One 45 seconds to go. Joey Range is going to sit down, and Hanlon's going to come in for him for Galesburg. Galesburg going into that bench just a little bit here. Get that ball into Thompson in the corner. Looking to, to work the ball down low. Nice pattern being run right now. Thompson, he likes that shot. Won't go this time. Oh, great hustle by Galesburg that time by Patrick Hanlon, but controls the ball, but to Moline. 25 seconds remain. Oh, nice oh, look. Nice. No, to Hanneman. Hanneman pinches it off. High score, 16 all. 
Here comes Galesburg. Tapper inside. Ball won't go. Partially blocked, I Ten believe. Ten seconds. Ahead to Hanneman. Out of bounds. Going to go off of Hanneman to Galesburg. 6.6 .6 seconds. Good I'll call. That's a good, good call. call. It's an excellent call. And if you're a Moline fan, you don't like that one, but that's okay. <laughs> you're not expected to. That's why it's officially you love a game like this. Every time you blow the whistle, half the people are not more than half, but the yeah. people are going to be on you, but you can't hear one individual fan. Look at this. Oh! Look out. Three on one with two seconds. Shea. Ball won't go. We've got a tie ball game at the end of the first quarter. Warden Fieldhouse, the, the game of the, of the uh, last 30 years, first of many maybe this year. Our, our score is tied, 16-16, and we'll be back. Second quarter action in just a minute. This is Jim Sanders with Jim Smith. Well, we're back at Warden Fieldhouse. What a great first quarter. Jim Smith along with Jim Sanders, cameraman John Medina for Family Ties Production. Proud to bring you this uh, presentation of a great basketball game thus far, Jim. Gee whiz, 16-16, up and down the court. A lot of good defense. 16 points is a lot of points to score. Look at what the kind of defense we've seen played here. No question about that. And talk about maximum hustle by every kid out there. Everybody's giving it their best shot right now. Ryan Dexter from the three-point line won't go. Morrow rebound, gets his own rebound. Got Thompson on his back. And Thompson's <laughs> going to pick up that foul. Rod Thompson wanted to jump ball out of that, Coach. I don't understand it. Well, he had the chicken wing in on him there, and he was about ready to throw the legs in. Against number 32, Rod Thompson. Thompson, first personal on Thompson. Five team fouls now yep. for Galesburg. We talked about that in the, in the pregame, but what great position. He got to the baseline and got his own rebound, offensive board, and created a foul. So Molly did a nice job there, chance to go ahead here. Wilson fade away. Oh, he gets it. Points for Wilson tonight. 18 16 Bruins. Two on one. Shea, a little strong off the back iron. They're going to give him that shot and take Thompson away from him, that's for sure. Two on one, and Shea was going to be the one to shoot it. Dexter from the top of the key off the mark, won't go. Nice rebound by Hanlon. Hanlon does a nice job on the boards. Some pressure by the Maroons. Stop, pop, Glasgow won't go. Oh, my Slam, goodness. Dump. Joy Ridge. One of those high percentage shots, coach. Pretty good putback. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. What great timing. Yeah, not only do you have to be a great leaper, you have to have great timing to pull a play like it. that off. Well, in their offense there. now. Well, what good. a great uh, opportunity for us to bring these ball games to the folks, not only in the Quad City area here, but down at Galesburg also. They all get a chance to see this on uh, the uh, replay, Family Ties Productions uh, through TCI. So enjoy. Springer on the blocks. Morrow pulls up from the wing, fires a jumper, won't go. Little strong. Handling on another rebound. Because he's only averaging about one rebound a ball game, but he's had at least three here in this uh, uh, first quarter in just a little bit. So range. Joey Range is going to hit a three from the top of the circle. And just like that, 21-18, Galesburg. Three-point Galesburg lead as Dexter works the ball up the floor against uh, Shea. Shea tough on defense. Got a little reach in there. And I like that call. The game is not to be that physical. Well, that's Shea's first, but more importantly, six team fouls now for uh, Galesburg. So Molin will be in the bonus the rest of this half. Well, Shea six did minutes left. Shea did a nice job of coming in with Thiel in foul trouble. Thiel comes into ball game now. Shea sits down. Thiel does have two fouls, so it's going to be important he comes in here and plays good defense and not foul at this point. Got Joe Manning in for the Maroons now, taking uh, Kenny Springer is going to get a little breather. Kenny Springer leads all scores with eight points in the first quarter. And I'm going to, over to Wilson. Can't find a handle on it. Range Look comes out. out. Joey Range on the break. Nice pass. Beautiful assist. Steve Glasgow to finish. The senior makes it 23 to 18. 
Little run coming by Galesburg right now, Coach. Well, Joey Rain showing his versatility. Oh, man. Just stuffed in a rebound home, knocks down a three, leads it up on the break and ditches off. Plays point guard, bringing, the ball, bring, right. bringing that ball down there and, and setting up and makes beautiful assists. So, so he's showing his worth right now, that's for sure. Dexter on the dribble. Manning down low to Hanovan, takes it across the paint, loses the handle out of bounds off the streaks. Well, you notice that time, Coach Galesburg ended up with three guys on Hanovan immediately as soon as that ball got down low. As soon low. as Hanovan brought it across the, the, the lane there, uh, Thompson came over to help, and uh, Range was behind him. Very good defense being played. You don't you don't get to be uh, between these two teams, uh, what, uh, 29 and 1 or whatever it is, uh, without playing great defense. Morrow from from the arc won't go a little strong. Oh, Joey Range again. Range Start. and Dexter a little bit of a Mitch match on right. that rebound. And Dexter's going to get called for a little reach in foul. That's four team fouls on the Maroons. First on Dexter. I'll tell you. Joey Range has shown some stuff real early here in this ball game. Like you said, I think on the last possession, being able to do lots of things to help his team. Springer back in now. Hanneman's going to catch some air on the bench. Mike Tapper comes in, and Patrick Hanlon's going to sit down for Galesburg. 23-18, Galesburg, 4.56 to go in the second quarter. Alley -oop. Tapper can't shoot it and makes a nice play on the weak side. Very nice. Beautiful play. Set play coming from out of bounds. Coach Miller called play number five, and that's exactly what they ran, and Moline needs a timeout. And we'll take a short break here as Galesburg is in the midst of a, a beautiful run here. Early second quarter action. They build a seven-point lead with 4.44 to go. So let's take a break. We'll be back in just a minute. back it was a quick 20 second timeout for coach Dexter needed to get his troops calmed down there in the midst of a uh, Galesburg in the midst of a 9 to 2 run here Man. in the first 3 minutes 3 minutes 15 seconds of the uh, second quarter yeah well, Galesburg's going to now they you know <laughs> Little blood in the water, and they're going to pick up the tempo defensively a little bit. That time he had Tapper, number 54, way out there and did a nice job of knocking that ball out of bounds. Unfortunately, it bounced off his own foot. Well, Moline has their starters back on the floor. That's Travis Wilson handling the ball. He's working against Rod Thompson. Travis dribbles down to the baseline. Reach around just, behind. Yep. And you don't want to do that, he, especially on that play, because the, the offensive player is heading out of bounds almost. It's not going. You're not going to help the cause any. He picks it up. We had the referee's dream going on here just a minute ago, Coach. We had all black shoes by Galesburg and all white shoes by Alleman, and that it's amazing how that helps you in a basketball game. But then Tapper comes in with white shoes and messed up the whole the whole system now. So <laughs> so we're we're back to square one as officials now. More about that later, folks. Yes, yeah, it's that's pretty deep stuff. You realize? Yeah, that puts uh, that, that puts. <laughs> Uh, Moline in the bonus <laughs> travels to go to the line, shooting the one and one. First one's up. Man. First Thompson. miss from the line for Moline yep. tonight. Glasgow inside, Joey Range, ball knocked away, tapper control. Seems to be everywhere right now. Theo misses, long rebound. Joey Range walked. Oh my God, Rod Thompson finishes it up. 27 to 18. 27-18, 351 to go. Moline's got to answer. It's all Galesburg right now. And they're impressive at this moment. Hanneman's going to get a foul in there. Joey Ray's won a little hook in action there. 34 is going to pick up the foul. Thompson is going to pick up that foul. The call he's asking for is the pivot men have a tendency to hook that elbow on the defender and man, it makes them turn the corner easier. Most all big men do it. Uh, some are better at it than others. Hanover knocks down the first one. Not to say that, that Rod Thompson wouldn't do it himself at the other end. Yeah. Right. You know. But that's a tough call for the official, especially when the guy spins in the lane because he's going away from the official that has the best look at it. Wide open. Galesburg's going to show a little patience. Steele sets the thing up, gets the ball back outside to Glasgow, and the streaks will set up. Joy Range has that ball stolen oh, by Travis, Travis Wilson. Wilson. There's a battle coming the other way. Going to get a block. Travis Wilson takes it down, and Range was 
trying to stay out of his web and end up being underneath yep. him a little bit, so Granger's gonna pick up two quick fouls. Don't wanna do that. Not the way he's playing this game right now. And just like that, Moline's right back in the ball game again. Patrick Hanlon's gonna come in and Joy Range is gonna sit down for a short time here. Travis 0 for 1 from the line. Up a little strong off the iron. Long pass down to Taylor Thiel. Sets the ball back up, gets the ball to Glasgow. Now they got Thompson out away from the basket. You got those 6'6 guys out that far away, but they're going to try to isolate underneath. Beautiful inside move. Glasgow says, well, if you take me underneath, I'm going to take you underneath. Yeah, I thought he was a three-point guy. What's he doing down there? 29-22, <laughs> three minutes. They ran to Marcus Morrow, played so many times at Prague. They said, this ain't all bad. Let's yeah, try this I can do this. Time. I can do this. I can do this, too. And he did. 29-22, 2.57 to go here. Second quarter action. Western, big six basketball at its finest. Dexter down low to Hanover, turns, fires, a little strong. Thompson, big rebound. Now he's got to take over for Galesburg and control the boards and make some shots. Glasgow in, so Tapper. A little trouble finding the baseline. Long three, a little strong. And Moline Wilson. controls. Morrow pushes quickly up the floor. Pulls it up, tries to set something up. Here we go, Springer around the horn. Dexter barks out of play. Wilson coming off the Hanovan screen. Well, pick and Wilson roll running the in now. Two-man game by Moline at this point. Hanovan and Wilson, that's not a bad plan. Look at that ball handling for a big guy. Drops it down to, he drops it down to Wilson. Wilson scores, there's a foul inside. Let's see what that call is. Interesting head movement. 54. Tapper, Mike Tapper's Mike gonna Tapper. pick up that foul. It's 10 Mike team Tapper, files now. His so the Maroons are gonna shoot two every time Taylor, the rest of the yep. half here now. Taylor Thiel's gonna sit down again. Bo Shea comes back in the ball game. Yeah. And we'll see if that makes a difference here. 2.07 to go and a seven point lead for Galesburg. Travis 0 for 3, uncharacteristic. He's usually uh, no. he's usually deadly from that line. You know, right now he hasn't got you know he's kind of just pushing that ball up. If he relaxes, lets that ball go like that, he's got her made. Well, Moline gets it back to six. Good defense that time. You got to be careful against that trap unless you're really quick. And Moline is 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 so good at, at applying that pressure. Now they got Galesburg in a tough spot on the floor to get the ball inbounds. Real tough place to get it in. It takes a pass like that, and that can be picked off. Bo Shea with the ball as they attempt to break this press by Moline. Tapper, he's going to stop and pop. Short. Banger with the board. Probably not the shot that Galesburg wants in that situation, but if it goes in, it looks awfully good. Wilson against Thompson. Not a foul Reach on in foul. Glasgow that time. You can see that one from up here. Yep. Caught, his, caught his arm. That's two on Glasgow. The foul goes against Galesburg's number 12, Steve Glasgow. Well, there's good news and there's bad news, folks. On the line, shooting two for the Maroons. The Maroons shoot two the rest of the half. Travis Wilson on the line is one for four from the line tonight. Well, yep. let's see if he can improve on his percentage here. He's had the most free throw opportunities. Make it one for five. He's talking to himself. Yeah. Give himself a little coaching down there. Thiel's going to come back in the ball game for Galesburg. Glasgow's going to sit down. Thiel brings in a uh, 8.6 uh, average. Travis Wilson on line averaging 20 points. Just under 20 points for the season per game. Oh, strong this again. Is another. And on the run for Galesburg. Taylor Thiel. Thiel will set it up. 139 to go. Galesburg hadn't got many good shots in the last three or four times down. And a lot of it has to do with how good Moline's playing defense. Moline going a little trap there. Yep. Doing a great gets, job on that trap. Gets a guy in the wing. Looks like they're going to double team him. You got to keep your head up. Keep looking for the open man. There's a, a deflected pass. Good idea. Good defense by the Maroons. Quick hands. 
Wilson brings it down, works against Thompson, takes it in, throws it up, won't go, Hanneman battle for the rebound. Ball's loose, Morrow comes up with it. No look pass to Wilson, strong in the basket. Wilson can't buy one, blocking foul. That foul's gonna go on. Number 54, Mike Tapper. That's three on Tapper. And they need him in there because he, he's trying to give him a little, little help off the bench here to spell some of the big guys. They're going to get 42. It's Alfonso Pugh. Comes in the ball game. He's a 6'3 junior. So we'll see if Pugh can step in and do a little job in here on the boards. You got to give him a, a minute six, coach. He's got to give him a good minute six and a six point lead. 29-23, streaks with the lead. Wilson at the line, shooting a pair. Travis looking for that rhythm now. Two for seven from he, the line right He's now. finding a way to do it, though, Coach. He gets there often enough. Yeah. He, well, if nothing else, he's creating foul problems for Galesburg. Galesburg, Four point inbound. Galesburg lead. Thompson gets the ball inbounds. Shea ends up with it. Good pressure by Moline. Pugh with the ball. There's that trap. Good ball moving. That's a huge three there. If that goes in, won't go. Pugh tries to keep it alive. Wilson getting his share of rebounds tonight, Coach. He sure he's, is. He's not the biggest guy in the court, but he gets great position down there. Well, and he, you know, it was time somebody he had from hit from Moline had to take over a little bit, and he jumped in and said, I'll take it over. And unfortunately, he hasn't made a lot of free throws, but he certainly, with his effort, has created a lot of things for Moline right now. 30 seconds to go, Coach. Spanger, Dexter from the corner. Oh. In and out, wouldn't go. And Galesburg may get the last shot here, although the way Moline plays defense, holding the ball for 22 seconds is real difficult. Yeah, that could be tough. What pressure, Pugh with the ball. Look Ooh. out, tops a nice drive. And the foul. We got a reach in foul. Thompson was going strong in the basket. He got fouled and put to the floor. He had two guys on him. Springer and Dexter were both there. Dexter's gonna pick it up, that's his second. Well, and it's a situation where uh, uh, you talk about good fouls, but it certainly was, it was. Trying to figure out who they called on on now. The announcer said, the board says uh, Dexter, the PA guy, said it was Hanneman. We'll see. Well, the, the, the official I looked at had five. He held up five. Yeah. That's where I got the call from. I saw one of the officials hold up number five. The foul was against number five. Yeah. Good like call, Dexter. Coach. Was Mr. Knob a little bit off base there, was he? Well, he missed that just a little bit. Mr. Knob is just bit. watching the game and not watching the officials. Come <laughs> on, John. 8.1 seconds to go. At the free throw line is Rod Thompson, a 6'6", 225-pound senior, averaging 13.7 points a ball game and 9.3 rebounds. And with Joey Range on the bench, they need him to come through, and he does with two free throws, 31-25. Moline runs the sideline play, trying to get a quick shot. Tip up, no! Wow, not gonna count. And no foul. Well, that completes the first half of play. Galesburg outscores the Maroons 16 to 10 in the second quarter, and they take a 31-25 lead into the locker room. We've got some uh, unusual situations here. Kenny Springer comes out for the Maroons, scores eight quick points. Travis Wilson goes scoreless in the first quarter, scores four points in the second quarter on two buckets, gets three more points for his total of seven, but unusually misses four free throws, and now Travis, five free throws. Travis Wilson just doesn't do that. For Galesburg, we've got six players that have, that have uh, broken into the scoring column with uh, Joy Range. We, we talk about his prowess. He's got seven points. Steve Glasgow with four buckets with eight points. Rod Thompson has eight points, three buckets, two free throws. Uh, Steve Tapper and uh, Taylor Thiel, a bucket apiece for two points, and Patrick Hanlon rounds out the scoring for the uh, streaks with four points on two first quarter buckets. For the Maroons, Marcus Morrow has two free throws, and Ian Hanovan, uh, doing yeoman's work underneath, has two buckets and four free throws for eight points, and uh, that completes Moline's scoring, so Moline's only have 
four players scoring with Morrow only getting two points. Well, and I think the, the one thing, the key to that first half, I think, was the run, basically, that Joey Range made there early in the second quarter. I think it was a 9-2 run or something right, like that right. that gave him that lead. Then for Galesburg, the bad news was he picks up the second foul, and he sits the rest of the quarter, and that's when Moline started to make some inroads, at least, and then it kind of leveled off at the end. So why don't we take a short break here? It's a halftime here at Wharton Field House. Packed house, 6,000 people here. Uh, Western Big Six basketball at its finest. At halftime, it's the Galesburg Silver Streaks 31, the Moline Maroons 25. Jim Sanders and Jim Smith will be right back. The Warden Fieldhouse, everybody. This is Jim Smith along with Jim Sanders. But a great battle we got going here between the Moline Maroons. Galesburg Silver Streak streaks by six, outscoring the that was deadlocked at the first quarter. Streaks outscored them uh, 15 to 9 there in the second quarter. What do we look for to start this second half? Well, I tell you, uh, talking to uh, John Medina, who is our you know our, our kind of a color analyst that doesn't ever say anything, but he he. He made a startling uh, statement. He felt that the first two minutes here of this uh, second half are going to be critical to both teams. Well, you know, I think uh, Moline got caught playing Galesburg's game there a little yep, bit in the, so in the second quarter. And, you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention a young man that's probably that's not here with the streaks tonight. Uh, got a young man that's uh, sick and not with the team. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Coach Sanders? Well, Jason Wessels has been sick since Christmas Eve, and he's a senior. He, he's he played quite a bit for Galesburg, and we just want him to know that uh, Coach Smith and I both teach at uh, United Township High School and, and want to let him know that we're all uh, been offered up in prayer by our Fellowship of Christian Athletes group that he gets better, and uh, we're looking forward to maybe coming down there in February for the basketball game, maybe even see him back in uniform by then. So, Jason, take care of yourself. Hope you're enjoying this, and uh, we will uh, hope to see you soon. So you get well quick, and, uh, and hang in there, big guy. Galesburg takes possession. He worked the ball down a range quickly, and Wilson reaches in, picks up his first foul of the game, first for the Maroons. Well, we'll see what uh, what happens here on the inbounds play. A little pick and roll. Thompson is up with the ball down to Joy Reyes. Oh, nice move there. And the roll. Shooter's roll, Coach. I don't know. You, you see the great players, and the ball lays on the rim and goes in the basket. Some other kids, they play as hard, as hard work as hard, right. and that ball would roll right off the rim for some players. So. Well, you know, it was a tough shot. He had nice soft spin on it. Ian Hanna went down low. <laughs> you bet. Showing what he can do. Yep. Answers right back. Galesburg breaks the press. Joey Range with the ball, gets the ball out front. Nice drive to the hoop, and it'll count. Nice, Steve Glasgow took that ball to the hole. Showing great leadership there. 10 points for Glasgow now. 35-27, Galesburg. Hanneman battling with Range, left hand move. Tell you, with that kind of entry passing and, that, and the moves that Hanneman has, they're owning the inside. Well, it's looking like maybe Coach Dexter said, hey, we got Maroons, or the streaks in a little bit of foul yep. trouble. Let's pound it inside, see if we can pick, get the big boys in some more foul trouble. Range has two, as does uh, Thompson with, uh, no, Thompson only got one, so. Well, they're working, obviously working to get that ball in the low post, and Hanneman's going to be a huge factor here if, if this continues. Great defense by Thompson that time, and they lead to Thompson. Nice drive, won't go. Joey Range on the rebound, goes up. Ball is in the basket. Joey Range, offensive board on the missed shot by Rod Thompson. 11 points for Range. 37-29, streaks with the lead. They're gonna double team Dexter out front. Oh, nice Dangerous trap pass. that time and a great steal by Glasgow. Oh, foul gonna come this time. Who's got it? Yep, Thompson's gonna pick it up. Well, Moline dodged the ball at that time, Coach. Well, I, uh, Thompson's protesting there, but he did go over. Uh, he did went over Kenny Springer's yep. back. And he was going for another one of those dunk rebounds. Yeah. Those are kind of neat to look at. Yes, that's for sure. Full court pressure now by Galesburg. Trap zone trap. Back man to man now. 
a Harlow steal. gets the ball stripped from behind. Joey Range. That's Range. Crowd wants a travel. We're going to get a foul on Moline. Spranger ran in there. He's going to head him off with the pass and bumped into him a little too much. I'll tell you, as fast, fast paced this game is, Coach, uh, the team in the best condition may pull this thing out at the end, too, because I'll tell you what, this is, you know, high, you know yourself, high intensity like there is with the emotion going into a game like this. You, the adrenaline rush, you you yeah. fatigue faster anyway. And now you're going to be burned out by halftime. You bet. So we'll see how that the plays itself out here into the third and fourth quarters. 5.55 to go. Eight-point lead by Galesburg. Moline ball. Thompson, long range. Dexter from the three-point land. That really helped. Ryan Dexter, first points of the night. Big three for the Maroons. Five-point uh, Galesburg lead oh, now. Nice. But Dexter's going to pick a foul up there. Nice drive by Patrick Hanlon. And he got the baseline, Coach, and uh, he took the hoop. Dexter's going to pick the foul. Leon on Dexter. Five, Ryan Dexter, his third personal team foul, number three. Foul situation is going just the opposite way. First half, it was in favor of the Maroons, and right now, three to one, the foul total here. Early going, too. Patrick Hanlon, after that nice drive, couldn't finish the layup, but steps the free throw line, hits the first of two, makes that lead 38-32. Gales Bird makes the second one, 39-32. Six points for Hanlon now. Here comes Wilson. Brings it up. Range has got Wilson. Range and Wilson. Hanneman back to Wilson. Looks at the basket. Takes it to baseline. Kicks it back out to Hanneman. Drives across the lane. Ball stripped. Oh, double dribble. Kind of a shot goes up, but it wasn't really a shot. Not. Must have got knocked it away. That's knocked it away there. But Galesburg does control inside. Thompson, you never know. Good power move to the basket by Rod Thompson. And just like that, a nine-point lead with five minutes to go here in the third quarter. And Ten Moline. points for Rod Thompson. Moline and Maroons. Let's see whether they want a full timeout or a 20. Full timeout for Moline. So why don't we take a break, Coach? We're here with at uh, Wharton Fieldhouse, 4.55 to go in the third quarter. Nine-point lead by Galesburg. Moline has possession of the ball. We'll be right back. Back. Maroons with the ball. Travis Wilson brings it in. This is Jim Smith along with Jim Sanders, cameraman John Medina. Backdoor left. Wilson with a slam dunk. Travis Wilson, Ryan Dexter. Well, we're that one gets to the one. crowd off their feet. One to one, coach, on the set plays coming out after half time, after a timeout. Oh, three pointer out of the corner by Rod Thompson. Woo! Well, that, that answers that in a hurry, doesn't it? Yeah. Man, we get a big cheer from one end and then a big cheer from the other end. Got Marcus Morrow checking back in the lineup. Travis Wilson going to go to the bench. Full court pressure now. Looks like man to man. Galesburg's going to pick him up. Dexter gets it in tomorrow. Well, then they run and trap a little ball press there, and they then they drop it back. Oh, trap again! Once they cross the 10-second line, then it goes back man to man, which is real impressive to be able to drop back and find your man that quick. Good pressure by Galesburg. Joe Manning down low. Hanovan Manning two-man game. We got a little too much pressure from behind by uh, who is that? Glasgow, Steve Glasgow. 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 And they've kind of said, well, well maybe we'll put a, uh, he's, 100, he's a 175 pounder, maybe we'll put him in there to avoid the foul. Well, they're kind of fronting him and uh, playing behind him, looks like, right now. But that's Glasgow's third foul, is, is it not? So Ray on Glasgow. That hurts a little bit, too. Shea comes in the ball game now, and they'll have to go back and put one of the big guys back on Hanovan. Shea, ooh, very close. Manning comes up with the ball. That's Springer out front. Trying to get some offense set up. Hanover on the high post. Running some cutters through. Well, Galesburg does a nice job of switching, Springer. staying after Ball the shooters. Fake. Drops it down to Morrow, across the lane. Hanover from the free throw line, too strong. Thompson on the rebound, looking for an outlet pass, none there. 
Puts the ball on the floor and gets the ball back to Joey Range, and Range comes across the 10 second line. Shea, boy, Range is posting up inside looking for that basketball. He kind of wants it in there, doesn't he, Coach? Thompson, free throw line. Oh, in and out. Great rebound by Shea and a foul against Moline. That's a big foul there. That's going to go on Ryan Dexter. Yeah, they're going to call that. Who are they going to no. call that on? Joe Manning. Okay, must have had him I first. I missed that huh? one. Four team fouls now yeah. for the Maroons. That hurt. That, that helps a lot with, with Dexter not picking up that foul. I thought Dexter was going to pick that yeah, foul. That would have been too. his fourth. Inbound Thompson. He forced that ball up against some pretty good pressure that time. Didn't get a call. Morrow quickly the other oh, way. Oh, nice defense by Joey Range. Because he got in the passing lane in a real big hurry. He was trailing that play and knew that he was going to get it to Wilson. Oh, wide open shot. Thiel is short, follows it. Short again. Thompson on a shot attempt. No good. Wilson rebound, oh. puts it back and through. 11 points, Travis Wilson now. Eight point streak lead, 44 36, for 245. Second, for a second, I just thought that you know, the game was going to be a little closer. I look up the scoreboard, he still got that eight point lead. Right. So, Galesburg still in control here, but a little out of control. Ball knocked out of bounds. Our camera angle is going to show you that that wasn't exactly the way that play needed to be called, but. As an official, you get one look at it, and the other underneath official wasn't able to help any because right. he was under he was he was on the far side of the basket. So you call what you what you see, and that's the way it works. Morrow kicks Mo it to Springer deep in the corner. Three! Oh. Got it! Kenny Springer! Three ball! Corner pocket. 218 to go, coach. Five-point lead by Galesburg now, and they're gonna take a timeout. Coach wants a 20-second timeout, so let's uh, keep it. Let's keep it here right now and see as we look into each of the huddles what kind of things can happen in a 20-second timeout. Well, it's been a little game of runs here, back and forth. Uh, Moline's making a little run now. They were down as many as 10. Got to cut back to five. Mike Miller says, "Hey, let's talk about it, boys, and uh, let's get this thing back under control. We're doing some good things. Ball's just not going in the basket." That's the advantage of the 20-second timeout also is the is the idea that, it, you know, you get in there, you probably didn't make many adjustments. Coach probably talking about settle down, maybe a, a play. You got time to set a play on an out-of-bounds play. Let's see. Moline's done it once. Uh, Galesburg has done that once also. But mainly calm down, get your composure. You're the team that's ahead, so don't panic here. There's 2-11 to go in the third quarter. Five-point lead by Galesburg, and they get the ball to Joey Range. He stops, pops, count the basket. Not many players in high school basketball coach that can make that play right there. Well, he's strong enough and got good body control. He got up in the air. Travis Wilson bumped him from the side. He held onto the ball, shot the ball. Frustrating when you're the defensive players and the offensive guy, so I'm going to hang here in the air a while, and when you go down, I'm going to still be here and put the ball in the basket. Joey Reigns trying to complete the three-point play, rolls it around and drops it in, and just like that, eight-point lead with two minutes to go here in the third quarter. 14 points for Joey Range. Boy, Hanneman and Range are just getting after it inside in there. They've got Thompson on uh, Travis Wilson. Dexter, three Airball. ball short. Range quickly ahead. Nice pass and a foul. That's going to go on Ryan Dexter, and that's going to be his fourth. Six team fouls now for the Maroons. That's going to be, that's big, that's huge. That's a huge foul right there. Well, good breakout that time by Galesburg. <laughs> Joe Manning going to come in and get Dexter now. Dexter's going to have to go to the bench with four fouls with a minute 45 remaining in the third. Tapper's going Streaks to come will be in the bonus yeah. the rest of the That's game. That's right. Streaks will substitute Tapper for Thompson here with that 144 to go. Give him a little rest. Boche stops, pops, count it. Just like that, went from a five-point lead to a ten-point lead. And the Maroons have got to answer back now. Springer in the corner. Out to Morrow. Range picks him up. The ball goes to Wilson. Hands both teams play great defense. Morrow three point range off the back of the iron won't go. Nice tip out Kenny Springer to Ian Hanneman. Takes it strong through the hole. 
Right, Morley needed those boot points. Hanlon with the ball, tough pass inside. Coach, that pass is not going to get completed very often. Springer's going to get another hoop. Well, we're back to six, 101. <laughs> Things happen quickly. 101 third quarter, Moline. A little bit of run by the That goal to call was as close as you're going to get to being a clean block. I'll, I'll say that the ball hadn't got to the board yet. So in theory, it was probably still going up, but yeah, it was that close. Bang, bang calls, the officials have to make it. I think the officials have done an excellent job here tonight. It's a tough ball game with a lot of action. Three-pointer, way short that time. In Manning uh, blocking <laughs> Hanlon off from the ball, and, and uh, Hanlon took exception to it, and Manning just walked away, no yep, problem. Just like that. Thiel that time fired that long three-pointer up, but it didn't go. Now, Streak shooters, he's liable to make the next two or three that he gets, but four, 34 seconds to go, Coach. Morrow up top, Manning, looking for Hannon, but down low, can't find him. Springer against Hanlon, takes it, kicks it to Morrow. Three ball, won't go. Springer over the back. 24 Kenny that time, Springer Patrick picks Hanlon up his third foul. On the rebound. That's gonna be a shooter. Hanlon's gonna go to the line, shoot the bonus. Bonus for Galesburg. In the lineup for Galesburg comes number 32, Rod Thompson. He comes in the ball game. And Joey Range is going to sit down. Good move by Coach Miller to get Joey Range out. No chance of a foul here. Hanlon's got an opportunity now to build on a lead here. Well, Galesburg perfect from the line. They haven't been there but uh, five times tonight, but they have yet to miss. So. One free throws one. are going to loom large now because they're going to shoot a lot of free lot of, throws. Yeah, the rest opportunity of the game. to shoot a lot of free throws. That's right. First one's up and good. And they, uh, I say that not to jinx them, but to just to point out that they seem to be an excellent free throw shooting team. That's right. Well, Hanlon, so far tonight, they've been better than Moline at that, in that department. 51-43 with 20 seconds to go. See, Moline points. goes for that last shot here. Wilson's going to handle the ball. And he's only palmed it three times so far. I was going to say, he's carried it <laughs> every time he's dribbled it so far. <laughs> he and Hanneman want to work two-man game. we got too much too much defense down yep. inside. I think that's going to go on Tapper. There's a, there's a fourth foul on Tapper. Well, he's an aggressive kid. He comes in off the bench, and that may be why he, he doesn't start. As he, you know, you can't start and foul that much. Yeah, he's played the uh, a quarter and a half and picked up four oh, fouls. Yeah, Alfonso Pugh is going to come back in the ball game. Pugh is, is back in for Galesburg. Tapper's going to sit down. It just takes away a little of their depth. Uh, Tapper's done a, done a really Four good seconds. job. Four seconds. Springer corner. Three ball. Long. Long throw. Right on line. Just short. Well, that wraps up the third quarter. Eight point lead for the uh, Silver Streaks. 51-43. They lead it. We'll take a quick break and be right back and give you a little scoring wrap up. Coach, it's Jim Sanders with Jim Smith, Warden Fieldhouse, Western Big Six basketball. At the end of the three quarters, eight minutes to go here, 51-43, Galesburg over the Maroons, and Moline gets the ball to start the third, the fourth quarter. Well, both teams have three players in double figures through three quarters. Uh, Moline with Hanneman, 14, uh, Springer, 13, Tr Wilson with 11. Uh, Galesburg has a range with 14, Thompson with 13, and Glasgow with 10. I think the difference is uh, Moline only has uh, two other players scored any points. Galesburg has four other, three other players with some yeah. points. So Galesburg getting a little more scoring, a little more well-rounded. Moline's looking to set some offense, work down low. Wilson on the paint, reach in by uh, 
range, and he's going to send Travis Wilson to the line. That's three fouls now. Range played that entire third quarter without that really picking up a foul. Gilberg. And in the same situation, uh, Ryan Dexter ended up picking up several fouls there in that in that third quarter. That uh, is, is going to uh, maybe make a big difference as this ball game comes down to the end. But Moline hangs in. You, know, you wonder how long Coach Dexter can keep Ryan out of the ball game right. with his ball handling skills and his three point shooting. Well, free throws are going to loom large for for the uh, Maroons right now, and uh, Travis Wilson's going to be at the line lines. Only three for eight there in the first half. So far, he's one for one here in the second half. Second one's up. In and out. Won't go. Joey Range controls the rebound, gets that ball to Steve Glasgow, and the Gal Galesburg Silver Streaks will set up their offense. Looking for good shots now. Got the ball inside. Joey Range, nice move. Power move and count it. Coach, he's a man among men. Boy, he is. He takes it strong. Strong to the hole. Uh, good hustle out there from defensively. Going to get a reach-in foul that time on Steve Glasgow. Now, eventually, as a player, Coach, you've got to come to the conclusion that the referees are going to call that. At this yeah. point in the ball game, you should know, I can't do that. I'm going to get called for a foul. Here comes Dexter back for the Maroons now. And answer one of those questions. Thiel comes in for Glasgow. But we would be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about Thiel. That's got to be John Thiel's grandson. That's I'm Legendary sure that's, coach at Gilsburg. Sure that's correct. Shea is going to pick up a holding foul. Good call. That was a nice call. Foul is called against Gilsburg's number 20, Cole Shea. His second person. Coach, you got, you got to like the way the Gilsburg kids get after the basketball. I mean, they're going to scrap. I mean, every. If every it's in the air, they think it's there. That's right. If it's on the floor, they think it's that's there. That's exactly right. And they hustle every second of the time. Well, it's a nine-point game, 53-44. Maroons trail here. Oh, a little pick and roll that went awry that time. Joey Range going to bring it back out and set it up. Shea starts to drive and pulls the ball back out, trying to get the ball inside to Thompson. But I'll tell you, they're committed to the fact that if, if, if it's not open, they're not going to take it down there. But they don't force it in no. there. No. Wide open, cutting underneath the basket. Not the guy they wanted. Shea, nice entry pass. You bet. Beautiful job. They had a chance on the other side to get the ball into Thompson, but he'd been about, oh, probably 12 feet from the basket. They, they reversed the ball and get it to him about five feet from the basket. That's good basketball, well-coached basketball team. Wilson picks up the foul down on the blocks. He's going to put Thompson. Thompson on the line. 30, number 32. He's two for two for the line, make that three for three. Well, they've got that look in their eye when they step up, shoot free throws, coach. They just know that ball's going in the basket. This is easy, they say. We can do this anytime we want. Boom. Thompson's smiling all the time, too. I, I'm never quite sure whether he's telling himself little jokes or what he's doing, but he really appears to have a lot of fun Join playing the game. basketball. That's right. Morrow working hard against Shea. Oh, look at this now. No Old shot. Basket. Now here's here's the thing, and we, this is this is on a on a video. The officials saw this last year. Rough play out front, not called, and Morrow ends up taking a swing, not a swing, but a, to get his hands off, he tries to karate chop his hand off. Now who who gets a foul there? Well, in this case, nobody. Now have we solved anything? No. That situation is still going. So something's got to get called on that play somewhere, or it's going to get rougher and rougher, and it's rough enough right now. Hanneman's going to go to the line. Shoot one in the bonus. So you can watch that situation just a little bit because you know that, that the Galesburg guards aren't going to back off and they're going to stay after that. So, well, this is not a time to lose your composure. We got a violation coming here. Yes, no. Now, Morrow walked out to go back behind the circle, but the official, I think, is going to say he was heading that way before I threw the ball to the shooter. I should have held the ball. And if that's the case, that's great officiating. And Hanovan made the second one. Yeah. But we waved it off, so he's got to make it is. again. Now, Morrow's yeah. limping a little bit out here, Coach. I'm not sure whether he twisted his ankle on that well, play. Well, he's had or? a bad ankle, so okay. uh, he, yep. might have, he might have twisted, re-injured yep. re that a little bit. Well, Hanovan makes the second one again. Cuts the lead to nine. 55-46, just over six minutes remaining in the contest. It's been a good one, folks. It's been a great game. Timeout by Galesburg here. Looks like they're going to go for a 20-second timeout. 
It's going to be a 20. Well, what are you talking about now, Coach? You're in the huddle? Galesburg called that timeout. We're getting to a point right now where he's drawing something. So he's going to have he's going to come out of this with a set play of some kind to see if he can get a real easy shot and maybe a quick foul. Now you've got Dexter back in the ball game again, and you've got some guards on Galesburg. We're going to see who he matches up with. They may try to penetrate and draw that fifth foul. Yeah, sir, last time they had the ball down at the Galesburg's end of the floor, uh, uh, someone, uh, I think it was uh, Glasgow, took Dexter down to the blocks. They didn't get the ball to him, but... You know, that was a foul situation waiting to happen, and they, yep. they couldn't get the ball in there, so. Well, it's critical. We're going to take a look here right now. Dexter's going to match up out front with Taylor Thiel. We'll see what happens here. A lot of picks and rolls here. They're filling the corner. See what happens. Several picks. And you never know. Are they trying to set up a little delay game here? They've got a little four corners look to this thing. There are 5.45 to go. There's 5.45 to go here with a, a nine-point lead, so. They're going to change this and try to run a little offense. But again, it's becoming critical time for Moline right now. Right. Joey Range to Thompson. Well, Range took the ball down the lane, and Thompson knew he was going to go either rebound or get a nice feed. Exactly but he got right. the feed and finished the play off. That's good basketball. Excellent. That's why you're 3-0 you're, uh, and oh in the conference, ranked number three in the state. Morrow takes it strong across the lane. That foul's going to go against. Is he looking at Range or is he looking at Shea? It's going to be Shea. Number 20. Bo Shea picks Beauche, up his yep. third. A lot, of, a lot of three foul people in the ball game right now, but, but you know, we're, we're talking about this uh, this ball game as, as a, a key matchup. But gosh, you know, we're talking to uh, some of the Galesburg folks before the ball game, and you know, of course, Galesburg's got to got to make that trip down. I think they even said next week they go to Quincy, so you two two back to backs. You go here and then uh, to Moline and then to Quincy. That's uh, quite a uh, eight day period there. So it's this is uh, uh, exciting time in uh, Western Big Six basketball, and there's going to be a lot, lot more good games along the way. And hope you folks, uh, if you enjoy what you're seeing here, why well, please contact your TCI uh, uh, office in either Galesburg or here in the Quad Cities, and uh, tell them you like it. And let's see if we can do some more of this stuff. We'd like nothing better than to go down to Galesburg here on the 20th oh, of February great. and do it again. Count me in. Call, give us a call on that. Joy Range. Controlling the ball. Galesburg showing a lot of patience right now. Hanovan, good pressure outside on Thompson. They got the floor spread pretty well right now with 4.52 to go and a nine-point nine Joey Range again. Well, we're going to get a charge. Travis Wilson had his spot picked yes, out. Range went strong to the basket. He doesn't like the call, but that's, a, that's always a, probably the toughest call official has to make. No question about that, but... You always, and I know you're not supposed to pay much attention to that, but as an official, if that if that offensive player isn't in control, I'm going to have trouble giving you the benefit of the doubt. That time, Joey Rage, uh, he shoots that stop and, ju and a jump shot four or five foot away at the basket so well, there's no reason to take that ball all the way to the hole. Right. Glasgow back in the lineup uh, uh, right now, number 12. Tap, tapper Four back into it. Yep, then Tapper. Okay. I'm well, back. Uh, looks like uh, Galesburg set up a little zone here. Maroons recognize that. They're going to get their offense set. Wilson calling something out. We're going to get something out, bring Hanover out to the high post. Dexter works his way around the three-point line. I'm sure they've got him identified as a shooter. Yeah, that foul on Joy Range was his fourth. Hand him down so. low off the iron. Won't go. Rebound tapper. This is the time that Moline needs to make something happen. And the fact that Galesburg went to his own is going to take Moline a little longer to get a shot maybe. Use some of that clock with uh, Joy Range sitting on the bench with four fouls over there. So, again, Mike Miller does a beautiful job of, uh, of coaching here and getting his kids the best opportunity to win this ball game on the road. Hostile environment here at Wharton Fieldhouse and a foul. A little too close by Marcus Morrow. Nine team fouls now on the Maroons. Mike Tapper is going to walk the free throw line, shoot the bonus here. He's a 6'4", 180-pound senior. And Coach Tapper, Moline's two gonna, points. Yep. He's going to take, uh, Moline's going to take a timeout. Coach Dexter is going to call the timeout. I think he wants a full timeout. So why don't we take a break here? Fort Fieldhouse is Jim Sanders with Jim Smith. We're looking at a 57-48 ball game. The Galesburg Silver Streaks lead the Moline Maroons with 3.56 to go in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back. Hey, we're back. 
back coach. The free throw line is Mike Tapper for the Galesburg Silver Streaks, shooting one and one. First shot's on the way, and it's good. That builds that lead to 10, 58-48. Tapper off the bench. They've used Tapper off the bench, and Alfonso Pugh, and of course, uh, Bo Shea. Well, took that time out, and they've got to make a little run right now. They've yeah. got to make every every possession has to count now. Let's see if let's see if Galesburg. Now they're back in their man-to-man. -man. Down to Hanneman, who's off the glass softly and through. Hanneman, 18 Hanneman. points now for Hanneman. Well, and they're uh, Galesburg's trying to do this with Joey Range sitting on the bench with four fouls. Moline has got Ryan Dexter in the ball game with four fouls, so we'll see how that strategy works out. It's about the time in a ball game like this, somebody else has to come to the front. Boche into Thompson, blocked out of bounds. Morrow says, not on this side of the basket, you don't. Yeah, I knew he couldn't get it up on the, on the uh, left-hand side. I said, I'll take it underneath. Hey, got that ah. news. Travis Wilson's over here, so I'm going to go to the other side, and Morrow knocks it away. Hanneman, whoa, good steal by Moly. Dribbling it right into Kenny Springer. He comes up with the ball. Springer kicks it to Hanneman. Ball fake down the lane. Soft shot, won't go. Put back by Wilson, and he's fouled. Patrick Hanlon's going to pick up that foul. Coach number 24, count that basket. One shot, and that run you were talking about is being made right now. And don't look now, but here comes Joey Range back in the ball game, along with uh, Taylor Thiel. And Shea is going to sit down, and Tapper's going to sit down for Galesburg. And 3.07 to go. We're going to go with what we, what, what's best for us right now. Yeah, we got the starters on the floor, and let's play. Yep. Let's play this thing out. Right on out. Seven-point lead. Travis Wilson trying to cut it to six. Struggled from the line tonight. Off a little bit. Goes quickly down the lane. Almost gets his own rebound. Well, you know, that's the with the new rule where the players can't come into the ball. hits that free throw shooter. If he can get a little run at it, he's got as good a chance as anybody now. But he can't cross the free throw line until the, the ball hits yep. the rim, can Same he? time. But he's got a little better idea of, oh, there, yeah. oh, look at this. And a foul. He's got a little better idea of, of when the ball's going to go and everything. And plus, he can get a little running start at it. Because he, if he shoots yeah. it and steps back and then realizes it's not going in, and that's kind of what uh, Travis yeah, I was going to say, like you said, he's the first one that knows it's not going to go in. That's right. And it's something that you work on in practice. It's not something he just thought of tonight. This is something that, you know, that's a pretty good play off of a missed free throw. Joy Range steps to the line, 16 points on the night. Free throw bounces up and through. Shooters touch on that one, Coach. Joey Range, 6'5", 200-pound senior, 20.2 points per game. How many points do you have tonight, Coach? 16 right now, 16. 17 right now, 18. 18 points, so he's close to his average. So he's upheld his end of the bargain here, as, long, as I think every one of these kids has done that. 61-52, 2.54 to go. Nice look underneath, Kenny Morrow up and through. Kenny Springer finds Marcus Morrow down low. Morrow converts. He's going to go to the line. Basket's going to count. Ball's going to go on number 24, Patrick Hanlon. Morrow gets a chance to make a three-point play out of it. Well, the only thing that can really hurt you down at this end right now if you're Galesburg is, is to give up more points than you could possibly score at your, at your end. And, and a three-point play is something you don't need to give up. You just give up that shot, and, and you go on to the next play. The Moline converts to three-point play. And now Galesburg has to break the press. Joey Range brings the ball. Oh, nice play by Moline. We got a fire from behind. Dexter trying to, trying to get the ball ahead to Springer. Foul from behind, he's gonna to go to the line and shoot two. Yep. Both teams in the super bonus now. Foul goes on number 24, Patrick Hannon. That's square on him. Yep. I'll tell you what, Moline has been in trouble before and have come back and made some great recoveries, and this may be another one right now. Well, they've got it to six. This could cut it to four with 2.37 to, to play. Well, Galesburg's going to have to answer back here now. There's an opportunity, like you say, to be a four-point ball game when we leave this free throw line. There's one of them. Now, Moline has answered back. Now we got to figure out, will Galesburg answer back one right. more time? Dexter with his second. On the way, and it's good. Four-point ball game. The 
the ball inbounds to Patrick Hanlon, the Joey Range. Thiel, Hanlon. Bruins hawking that ball all over the court. Boy, they are moving quick as they did when they started the ball game. We talked about maybe somebody running out of gas, forget that. Yeah, now we're gonna run on adrenaline for a while. Right. Range, Wilson, hangs in the air, gets his own rebound, his own puts rebound it up. And a Got kind it. of Joey Rick with an offensive board and a put back. What an athletic play. Ball's gonna go on Hanneman. Only two on Hanneman. Well, I'll tell you, very big to big play there. Six point lead with a pan chance to make it seven. 20 points for Joey Range on the night. Make it 21. He's averaging 20. Big three point play. Huge play there. Moling gets the ball inbounds. 2.10 to go, coach. Seven point streak lead. Dexter out front. Looking to set up double high post. They run Morrow through down low. He comes around the top. Feeds it down to Wilson. He works against Thompson. Off balance shot. We get a traveling call. Thompson had bodied up on him. Yep. Yeah. Travis got a little bit off balance yep. and uh, drug his pivot foot. That's right. That really had no place to go. Thompson, big time defense, hands up. Uh, didn't have a knee in his back or anything. And uh, the contact was at least partially initiated by Wilson. Timeout, quick call, good play that time by Taylor Thiel to call a timeout so the five second call wouldn't be made. Full timeout, Coach. Why don't we take one more break here? We'll come back. There's 156 to go, and Galesburg leads by seven. Yeah, both teams back on the floor. Galesburg forced to call a timeout there, the Moline pressure. Galesburg leads by seven. Joey Range has the ball inbound. Nice pass and a good play set up by Galesburg to get the ball inbounds. Travis Wilson's going to come out and pick up Joey Range. Oh, a quick double team and a jump ball. Great defense by Dexter. Possession arrow goes to Galesburg. But a little play like that, sometimes you wonder the effect, but it does turn turn that possession arrow around and stops the clock. So. Well, that's a, a nice little set play. Uh, it forces the, the guy to turn his dribble around, and you just run in and tie him up. Thompson stops. Nice pass. Beautiful pass by Thompson to Steve Glasgow. Nine-point lead by Galesburg. 136 to go. Huge hoop there. One minute, 30 seconds remaining now. Wilson out front. Maroon's got to score, and they got to score in a hurry. Wilson, long three. Little short, range with the rebound. Range got the ball, going to clear the floor. Tough time for Moline right now. They've got a foul, probably going to have to foul in a hurry to see if Gale, oh, they will steal the ball. Over and back. Over and back's what you got Oh, here. we're going to get a foul. Oh, oh, timeout call. Timeout. Nope, timeout call. Timeout. That's a good call, and then, then it wasn't a foul there, so that worked out real good. Let's keep it right here and talk a little bit about, as we went into the ball game, scoring uh, averages and things like that for the, the key players in the ball game. Coach Joey Range came into the ball game for Galesburg, averaging 20, and he has 21 or 22 points. Got 21 right now. Thompson came in averaging 13-7. He's got 17 right now. And then Glasgow had about a nine-point average. He's got 12. And uh, Thiel at a, a nine-point average. Well, Thiel's only got two. So that, that's that's the, the guy off tonight. For uh, Moline, Wilson's averaging 20 a ball game. He's at 15 right now. Ranger has been averaging eight. He's at, uh, who'd you say? Eight. Eight. Pranger? Yes. Yeah, he's got 13. That's good. Hannah, 15. He's got 18 right now. And Marcus Morrow with 11 and a half. And he's got, uh, let's see, three, four, six right now. And uh, Dexter with six and a half. And he's got five. Okay, so. We're close. Of, very close. Very, close very close. Close averages. There. And that's why you have a 66-57 ball game with uh, a game which just moments ago, Moline had an opportunity to, to draw. They were within four points, uh, but didn't get the ball back down four. So and Moline's got to really turn the defense up, but they've been playing tough defense, but they're going to be almost forced to foul now. Joey Rage with the ball, looking to get it to Thompson, gets the interior pass into Thompson. How did Hammond move on. so far that time? In, oh, look out. Looking for the travel. Thompson, going to be a charge, no question about that one. Absolutely no question. Now, Thompson's already talking about the NBA rule where you can't charge in that little dotted line, but don't look now, there is no dotted line right in a high school basketball game. That's a couple levels up from where we are right now. Well, we're just under a minute. Moline trails by nine. It's going to take a 
some some real strong three-point shooting to get them back in the ball Question game. about that. And they got to push hurt. it up the floor. Take a quick three. They can't afford to work it too much. And Dexter does just oh, look out. Look Show out. range. Showtime. Oh, you're going to count that. You're going to count it. Crowds are on the floor. Big hoop. Dexter goes up. It's going to foul out of the ball game, Coach, but a great effort to block that shot. Well, Ryan Dexter gave it his own, but he was no match for Joey Wayne. No. And, I, no. and that's not a dirty play. I wouldn't, I don't interpret no. that as a dirty not play not, at all. No, I. He went up. He didn't swing in his head. Nope. He didn't, uh, nope. didn't and do anything. And the officials didn't see it that way. They no. called the foul. Joey Range uh, makes the basket, which is the bad news for Moline, and has a chance to make a three-point play out of this. Joe Manning coming in now is going to take uh, Dexter's spot. 46.1 seconds with an 11-point lead. I'd say the streak just about got this one yep. sewed up. Well, great effort by Moline tonight, no question about that. Shea is going to come in the ball game, and number 22, Taylor Thiel, will Taylor Thiel will sit down. Moline has the ball across the 10-second line. Hanneman in low misses the shot, and Galesburg controls. This nice outlet pass. They'll slow down. Look at this, Joey Range. Coach, he just knows where he's at, and the ball's going to go in the basket every time. 71-57. Galesburg will move to four and all. Moline is still by Joey Range. Tomahawk dunk for Galesburg. 73-57. Playing it out now. Travis Wilson. Hey, look out. <laughs> look out. Moline. Wow, what an exciting way to come down to the roll again. <laughs> There's nobody left this season, but I'm glad they didn't because they missed two great dunks within about 10 seconds of each if other. You're on the way, if you were on the way to the car, now you're watching it. Shame on you, you shouldn't have gone. <laughs> it, it is unbelievable, the end of this ball game. 73-59, 2.8 seconds to go. Steve Kenny Glasgow Springer picks shoot. up a foul there. He's going to send uh, wow. Glasgow to the line. Shoot a pair. Glasgow yeah. has 12 points on the night. It's well, going to be the Silver Shrieks here. They lead by 14, 2.8. Been a great ball game. It's not a 14-point ball game, I don't think, but no. uh, Moline was forced to do some things right at the well, end. Not there. long ago, it was a four-point ball game, and but on the, on the the next possession, if I've got the game in my mind correct, at least. question if something's going on down here something's going on we're not quite sure what that is coach Dexter's talking to players shouldn't talk to coaches no that's not that's, right that's for sure and vice versa right and vice versa and I don't know why opposing players and opposing coaches shouldn't be talking communicating to on that's the right. basketball floor Joey Ray's coming out of the ball game but he and coach Dexter are not Coach Dexter are not doing a uh, uh, doing a dead man stare at each other out here right now. But to the free throw line, Steve Glasgow. We don't want to spoil. We don't want to do at this point. Spoil what a great game this has been. Well, Coach Miller took range out of the game. He was that's smart. He that's was smart. trying to he was trying to talk to Coach Dexter, yep. and uh, that's uh, that's not spoil it, like no, you said. No, that's exactly right. Joy Range has been a marked man for four years, as has Travis Wilson in the opposing gyms, and they hear it all, I'm sure. Nobody, Thompson's going to get the last shot off, but we have ourselves a ball game here. Excellent ball game played here tonight. Well, two free throws there, put it away. That makes it a 16-point game, 75-59. Coaches are talking it over down at half court. Hope there's no hard feelings down there, but uh, the players did not shake hands when they left the floor. No, so. they did not. And that may be the wisest thing to do under certain circumstances. And, you know, not being down there, it'd be difficult for us to, to make any judgments along the way. But let's not let what happened there in that last 30 seconds of this ball game uh, detract from the, the huge crowd, the great atmosphere, the excitement of a, of, a, of a big ball game in Western Big Six. 